Welcome to a Feldenkrais Awareness Through Movement lesson. I'm Ortal Goldschmidt. I invite you to join me. Today we're going to explore the mobility of the hip joints. Can we have more mobility in our hip joints even if we're not flexible there? Hmm. Can we make our minds more flexible? So I hope you're curious. Remember to be gentle and kind. Don't reach pain. If you feel any discomfort, stop and reorganize yourself. Try to make the movement possible. Sit in a cross leg sitting. And just take a moment to feel how comfortable it is. Maybe it's not comfortable at all. Which leg did you choose to put in front? How far is your right knee from the floor? How far is your left knee from the floor? Is your back roundish or more straight? What part of the pelvis are you leaning on? Is it forward, backward, more to one side than the other? Where do you feel that you make an effort? And now switch the legs. Which way is it more comfortable? And just have this in your memory. We'll, we'll remember that and come back to it at the end of the lesson. And lie down on your back. Invite yourself into yourself. Feel your contact with the floor here and now. How long are you? How wide? Pay attention to your right leg. How does your heel touch the floor? Where are your toes directing to? your knee, how is your lower leg resting on the floor, your thigh, and now do the same with your left leg, how your heel is touching the floor, the direction of your toes, your knee, lower leg, thigh, and compare between them. How big is the gap behind your knees? How big is the gap between your lumbar area, your belt area, and the floor? It's right here. What parts of your back are resting and which parts are slightly lifted away? Your arms, your head, and your whole self. Take a picture so we can compare. Take a moment to feel your breathing. Where do you feel the movement of your breathing? In which parts or areas of yourself? And stand your feet wide apart. We're going to take our left knee and let it sink to the left and back up. We're doing each movement many times because repetition creates variations and you can take the time to listen to the movement in your hip joint, in your foot, how your foot is rolling towards the outer edge and back. How far is your knee from the floor? And the next time just leave your knee in a comfortable place you can always slide your foot so it will be more comfortable.
Press on your right foot and lift your hip. So the right part of the buttocks is rising up and sinking down. And the groin is opening up and then closing. And you can take your hands and place them on your pelvis and just listen to the seesaw movement. How one side of the pelvis is up and the other is sinking down. Can you feel an echo in your chest, in your back, in your shoulders? And do it quicker. Keep, up. Keep on breathing. Stop and bring your knee up and then let it down once again and see and feel the change stop and rest how is your left leg resting on the floor the direction of your toes, your knee, the gap behind your knee, is it different? And again, bring your knees up and let's do the same movement with our right knee. First of all, just take a moment to listen. How does it compare? How is it here? if we keep our pelvis without movement at all. It doesn't take long for me to feel that I'm holding my breath and the leg doesn't move much. So why not engage the pelvis? Let's place the knee down, rearrange your feet should you need to, and just let your hip joint come up and sink down and feel that seesaw movement which is calling the pelvis to participate and the ribs you can put your hand on your ribs and just feel the movement and maybe if you don't hold your head it will participate as well and you could let your left knee stay for facing the ceiling as much as it is comfortable. This way it will open the groin and do it quicker and stop once again. Let's see if anything has changed. So did your knee get smarter? Stop and rest. Has anything changed in the length of your leg, the way it's resting on the floor, the direction of the toes, the knee? your breathing and stand your feet place them wide apart more than usual and you can let your left knee sink inward and back and just feel the movement of the hip turning inside. Is anything else participating? When are you exhaling? Try to do both. 
Try to exhale when your leg is going down. And the other way. Inhale. So you can really explore which is helping the movement. And now instead of only taking the knee to the right, let's try to direct it down. And see, is it helping the movement? So the knee could go further down in this direction. Is anything else moving? Did it cause a chain reaction in your back, in your ribs, maybe even in your head? Try to feel what your nose is doing. And stop and rest. Anything change in the way you are resting on the floor? Can you feel more parts are in contact now? It can be even a slight difference. It doesn't have to be big. And stand your feet again. Let's do the same movement of sinking down inward with our right knee exhale with every movement down and try to direct your knee to the left and down and Feel the movement of your chin this time. And now sense the movement in the back of your head. So it's as if we have a string connecting between our chin or our nose and our knee. Can you feel an echo in your spine? And now alternate between the legs, the right and the left. What happens if you don't hold back? If you just let your head participate and let your ribs participate and don't think so much about holding the other knee to the ceiling. Just let it be, and maybe you can do it even faster. And stop and rest. Feel the contact between yourself and the floor. What is, your, what is the floor telling you? Does it feel a bit more comfortable? Stand the feet. And now let's take both knees to the right and to the left. You can place your hands on your pelvis and feel the movement. And again, just hold your pelvis while doing so. Try to hold the pelvis and see how it affects the movement of your knees, of your hip joints. So it's not only about the flexibility in the hip joint. It's about your back, your pelvis, your spine, your chest. So let it be like a baby is moving. It's more organic. Each part contributes, but it has to in order to make the movement more fluent and possible. 
So why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we go back to the organic movement? And just stay there with your legs to the right, with your knees to the right. If it's not comfortable, you feel that it's stra straining, you can change a little bit the way you're organized and place your left hand behind your head and lift your head while we're taking the air out. You want to keep your look with the direction of the movement, your gaze. Take the air out. What is happening in your left hip? Can you feel that it's coming up towards your head? Stop and change between your hands. You can let your elbow help you come closer to your face. Stop and let the knees go from side to side. Feel if it's any bigger, more easy. Stop and rest. What about your lumbar area, your belt area? Has it sinked down? Even if it's a bit, it's a difference. And again, let's take our knees to the left and place your right hand behind your head. Raise your head while exhaling. Look what your hip is doing. Yes, you can look with your eyes. It helps you round more easily. And see how the pelvis is smart, reacting to this movement of bending in this awkward position. Change between your hands. Maybe now you can even feel a movement here in your chest, in your ribs. And again, let your knees just move from side to side and see how your whole self is reacting. And stop, rest, Stand both feet on the floor and let your knees sink to the right. Take your right arm up above your head on the floor so your palm is facing the ceiling. And the same with your left hand, only that directed down towards your left heel. And now we're going to take our head, roll it to the left and elongate the left hand in the direction of the left heel. How bad do you want to touch your heel? Can you let go of this ambition and just think about the movement? And take your left hip up towards the ceiling while doing so. So your left buttocks is lifted from the floor and the hip is rising up towards the ceiling. Does it help? Can you feel that your back is arching? What are the ribs doing here? And do it quicker. 
stop and rest. Again, the same position, only now we're going to roll our head to the right, looking at our right palm. And we're going to elongate this palm and look how this arm is elongating and explore how can we help this movement from the pelvis, from the ribs, from the back. And try to do both, to elongate both hands at the same time and just let your head roll. And do it faster a few times and stop. When we do a movement fast, we do it simple without thinking. It means that we already found out a way of doing it comfortably. Can you feel a difference in the ribs on the left side and the right? Can you feel a difference in your breathing? Maybe one lung can expand more. And stop. Stand your feet, let your knees sink to the left and organize your arms, your left is up by your head, your right is down, both palms are facing the ceiling, and let's elongate the right arm and roll the head to the right as the arm goes down and back to the ceiling as the arm shortens. Now think about the right hip. You want to push it up in order for you to shorten the right side. And now face to the left, to your left palm, and elongate both. And rolling the head again towards the ceiling. Let your belly come out, let your hip come up. And do it quicker. Stop and rest. Do you have a clearer picture of your whole self? Stand your feet and slowly roll up to sitting. Okay. Let's go back to crossed leg sitting and take a moment to sense is there any difference from the beginning of the lesson? Does it feel as if the back can hold itself without an extra effort? Or maybe that it's not stressing in your hip joints? Maybe your weight is more in the middle? Just sense how it is. And let's switch between the legs. Take a moment to feel, to notice and distinguish the differences. And stand your feet on the floor. Take your hands, lean on them behind you. And take your knees to the right, both of them together, and to 
to the left. So we are doing the same thing only in sitting now. So one hip is turning inside while the other is turning outside. And let's try to do the same movement without, um, without letting our pelvis and chest participate. I really feel that I'm holding my breath and I need to make an effort. So let's just make the movement more organic and fluent and let the hip joint rise and just keep the hands on the floor. So you can have more movement in your chest and just feel what's happening there. Is it What's happening in your ribs, in your back? When is it rounding and when is it extending? And what about your head? Where are you looking at? When are you exhaling and when are you inhaling? And you can take it forward, play with it. Just play with it and maybe backwards. And maybe even find a way of coming up with it. Take a moment in standing. Feel how tall are you? How grounded? Slowly open your eyes to orient the environment to yourself. And let's play with it while standing. Let's take our knee inside and outside, our right knee. So you can lift your heel and play with it. Again, hold your torso. And feel how the movement is smaller, smaller. And just let all your body parts participate and stop. Feel the way you can lean better now on your right leg. And now the left one. Quicker. You can even challenge your balance system. And stop. Take a few steps. Feel the relation between your hips and your pelvis. Maybe your knees want to rise up. It's okay if they don't, if you don't feel it, you can just do it. And walk backwards. And forward again. So I hope it was interesting for you. Exploring at your own time, at your own pace. You can do this video uh, while stopping it if you need breaks and I really recommend that you repeat this lesson again and again because then you can deepen your exploration, deepen your learning and open up to new options. Thank you and take care.